I'm Ira Hall, and this is our annual report. What a year, what a couple of years we've had. You could say that God has knocked our socks off. Looking back, we have to go back a little more than a year to think about how we got to this point. We had been experiencing growth for years and we let it get away from us a little. We didn't do what we needed to do to prepare for all the new people God had sent in. And pretty soon we couldn't fit any more in. Finally, in desperation, we realized we had to do something because we had new people every week, but we weren't getting any bigger. People weren't staying. People were leaving as fast as they were coming because we were overcrowded and we couldn't fit any more people into our little sanctuary. It was hard to get out of. It was overcrowded even just in the entryway. It was awkward getting downstairs. We were in trouble. We went to two services back a year and a half of a year and a half ago and that helped relieve much of the pressure but it still didn't change the fact that our building was not situated was not really what we needed to be able to effectively welcome all these new people in but God knew what he was doing and he brought the builders for Christ to us he made all the arrangements I didn't even know that we could get them and yet God worked everything out through other people and the Builders of Christ agreed to come. At the same time, we asked CB to come and do an assessment to try to help us understand what did we need to do so that we would be faithful to the work that God was doing in sending so many new people. They came in and assessed us and it was such a blessing as the assessment told us that there were many things that were going well we were experiencing God's blessing and we were on mission. But the assessment gave us things that we needed to take care of because if we didn't, they could mean the decline of the church. It has been a full year and these changes have been hard. The church feels different than it used to. It looks different than it used to. Walking in Sunday morning is not just our little group of people and our little building. Now it's a big building and it's a lot more people. We don't all know each other the way we used to, now scattered over two services. And there's just so many new faces that we don't all know. It is a change and change can be hard. The assessment has given us a, a path that we are pursuing and we're going to talk about that in a couple minutes here but we have changed a lot. And I know that that has been a struggle for some, and it's going to be, it's been a struggle for me as well. But God has been faithful. And through this, we have made no changes just because we felt like it. Every change has come to us as God has shown us through his will, his Holy Spirit, his bringing circumstances into our lives to help us know what to do. Myself and the other elders have spent so much time praying and seeking the Lord and he has guided us and led us through this. Some amazing things have happened. We've seen so many new people come. We've seen salvations. We've seen people who didn't used to go to church start going to church or people that had stopped going to church a few years back come back. This last summer, we baptized nine people down at Camp Berea, and we have more people being ready to be baptized. God is bringing people in, helping people deepen in their walk, and getting people more ready to be disciples, not merely church attenders. These are all good things, and we are excited for what has happened so far. So we've had the new building, we've got the assessment recommendations, We've seen more new baptisms, more new members, and just a wonderful spirit. Is everything perfect? <laughs> no. And my guess is it won't be perfect this next year. But let's talk about that. The biggest change from the assessment that we are making is we can no longer run like a small church. 
When I started at Beans Corner 21 years ago, we were 60 to 80 people on a Sunday. And of course, 60 to 80 people, well, not all of them are part of the core group that make the decisions. So a business meeting, we kind of all knew everybody and it was easy to make all the decisions together. That has changed. Now on a Sunday, we can have between 250 to over 300 people. We're in two services. We're not the same group of families that we were 20 years ago. So we have to change our structure. Also, times have changed. Organizations, not just churches, are finding that the old structure of just having a few boards and committees and lots and lots of meetings, it doesn't work anymore. People don't interact with organizations the way they used to. So we're transitioning to the accountable leadership model and we are going to have teams instead of boards and committees. Now this is a tough transition when we've been used to having boards and committees and used to having all the church get together in one big board meeting called the annual meeting or the quarterly meetings and everybody decides everything with a vote. Well, we can't do that anymore. There's too many things going on. It's too hard for everyone to know what ha needs to happen. And we, it doesn't give us enough nimbleness to be able to do what we need to do in the time we need to do it. So we're empowering ministry staff and we want so many people to be part of the teams. And this should open it up so more people can do more things, but we won't have a bunch of people that are doing everything and maybe getting a little worn out. So this new structure will be team leaders and teams, and it will allow people to do an area, get involved, work here, work there, and be freed up to just go and not sit in meetings and discuss what needs to happen so much as actually going and doing it. We also are gonna work on having more outreach, getting out there and connecting with our community. It is essential that we focus outward. Too often the church has been inwardly focused, not just Beans Corner, but the church in general has been inwardly focused. We play the music we like, we have a service the way we like, we talk the way we like, and we're all friends and we get together and we just enjoy each other. Now there's nothing wrong with that to a point, but the goal, the command of Jesus Christ the leader of the church is to go and make disciples. And if we just sit and be disciples, we're being disobedient to the Lord of the church. So we need to go out. We have a wonderful opportunity with the building and with different things. We have a neat opportunity to connect more fully with our community. We have a good reputation overall with our community. Just having the Christmas lights with the Beans Corner lights between the church and the Daigles, we had over 300 people come through the doors to have cookies and cocoa. This was just a great time for us to just touch their lives and say, hey, we care about you, we love you, and we care about this community. We're gonna seek to do many more things. And boy, if you have an idea, if you would like to be involved with that, we need you, we need you to help as we together work to connect with our community and say, hey, we're here as Beans Corner Church and we want to be a part of this community. We want to love on this community. The community has a lot of needs between Jay, and Wilton, Farmington, Chesterville, and all the surrounding towns. There's a lot of needs. There are so many opportunities. In fact, our problem won't be trying to figure out what we can do. There's so many things, more than we can do. The problem will be, what do we need to narrow down so that we may be effective in a few things in reaching our community for Christ? One of the other big things that is changing is that we are hiring a second pastor, but it's going to be different than we've ever done it before. When I was hired, I was probably one of the first times in a while the church had had a second pastor. And I was kind of the, first I was the youth pastor, which we understood. And then I was the associate pastor, which was kind of like being the vice president. 
When the pastor wasn't available or needed a break, I stepped in. And so, you know, he's going to be gone this Sunday, so the other pastor can preach. The other pastor can just fill in and do all the same things that the main pastor does, just not as often. And when we first hired our next associate pastor after I was senior, we did the same thing again. We basically had senior pastor and sort of like the senior pastor, but not as much. That's not the model we're going with now. We're hiring an executive pastor, which really is an assistant to the pastor, assistant to me, to help me do the things that God has not gifted me in doing. I am not good at running an administrative structure. And anybody who doesn't know that hasn't been around me enough. Just ask Beth. So we need to hire someone whose gifts complement mine. Someone who is going to basically work right under me, hand in hand with me, to fill in those gaps and do the things I can't. So it won't be, well, he's just like Ira. He's going to be different. He may not be able to do the things I do because he's got to be able to do the things I don't. And so we're going to go that way and that is going to free me up in a way I haven't been free in years. One of the gifts God has given me is the ability to teach and to train. There's training that I receive that I can give that I have never been able to fully utilize at Beams Corner because I'm too busy. There's so many other things taking up my time that I haven't had time to also plan and execute training. If we want other people to be able to do things, Sometimes they're going to need training, and I can provide that training once a bunch of this other work has gone off my plate because the executive pastor and the team leaders are taking care of it. So I'm looking forward in the next year to two that we're going to offer a lot more training so that we can equip many of you to do more things and you're going to feel more confident because we can give you the tools you need. There is excellent training available as good as anything you would get just going and taking a course at a Bible college, which is a great idea to do as well, but isn't always feasible because of how, where we are up here in the Western Mountains. So we're going to be offering over the next couple of years more training as I can focus more on what the Bible says my job is, which is not to go out and do all the ministering myself. The Bible says that God gave pastors to equip the saints so that they could do the works of service. And so that is part of what we're going to be working towards and part of why we are hiring an executive pastor who can free up some of the things that I either have been trying to do or just not able to get all done so that I am free to do training. Finally, one of the big things we need to do is focus on our mission. We're here to make disciples. We're here to reach people, bring them in, build them up, give them work to do so they can go back out into the community as part of us to bring in the next batch. It is not about sitting around and feeling how good things are going as a church. The minute we sit down and just say, hey, we got this, that's the day the church begins to die. So instead, we are going to keep focused on mission. There may be good things to say, oh, this would be fun, ah, but it doesn't help us get our mission done. So that might be a fun thing. It might even be a good thing, but it's not our thing because it doesn't advance the mission. And we're going to make our decisions not based on, well, I think we ought to do this, but instead on what has God called us as Beans Corner Church to do? What has he equipped us to do and prepared us to do? And those are the things that we'll do and we will save our resources to be effective in the areas that God has called us. And we may work with other churches. There are some other marvelous churches that are sisters here, sister churches here in Franklin County. And some of them may be able to do some of the things we can and we'll work together. But we will be relentlessly focused on the mission. Here are some of the goals that we need to think about going forward. The first is, we are no longer able to know everyone. Our goal is that everyone be known. You can't walk into church and expect to know every face, especially with two services. I can't keep track of everyone anymore. 
But the goal is that everyone who comes in, everyone who starts to attend, becomes known, becomes connected, walks in each week and says, I have people here who miss me when I'm gone. I have people here who focus on my life and care about me and I care for them. And so again, that's a different structure than what we're used to. But that's going to be our goal this year with assimilation and discipleship. We won't know everyone, but we want everyone to be known. The next goal we want is an active membership and all the members active. What does it mean to be a member? Well, it's not some secret society and we don't have a special handshake. All it means to be a member is you say, I am a Christian. I have given my life to Christ. I now walk in obedience with him and I want to serve him as part of his body. I am willing to be held accountable and to hold accountable my fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. In other words, what the scripture says it means to be a Christian. And so we just enter into that relationship where we say, we will be members one of another. We will deal with our lives and we will work together for the mission. And then to be a member will mean, okay, I'm here. What can I do? How can I help the church achieve the mission that God gave us? And so we'll have a very active membership and people who are active will be members because that's what it'll mean to be a member. I am helping the church. I am serving the church. I am pursuing Christ in community. Oh, won't that be great? Another goal is our discipleship process. We want, even as we work running the mechanics of the church, whether it be taking care of the lawn mowing, the snow removal, whether it is putting on a meal, taking care of the decorations in the building, or whether it's implementing programs from the children through the youth to the adults. Whatever we do, we want the process to be a process of discipleship. Instead of going, all right, who can we just jam into a position? No, whatever we're doing, let's do it with others. As new people come in, say, hey, come along, do this with me. I'd love your help. And pretty soon, why don't you do it and I'll help you? and we'll raise up workers. We'll share the work with one another. And as we're doing that, we'll also say, well, let's go out to lunch. Let's sit here and talk a little bit and share our lives. Here's what I'm struggling with this week. Here's what God's teaching me. How are you doing? And as we work together, we'll share our lives with one another and that's discipleship. And we will pour our lives into others and they will pour their lives into us and even as we're doing the work of the church as far as details, we will still be focused constantly on how can I connect my life with other believers to learn from them and to share with them what God is doing with me. Now, this isn't going to always be easy and it might be new for some of us, but it's going to be such a marvelous thing if we can grab that vision and go forward. Finally, as I've already mentioned, we really want a great community connection and there's so many opportunities ahead. So we're going to be looking to fill uh, out the outreach manager position and have someone who will help oversee that. But again, it's not one person doing it, it's going to be teams of people. So if you're new, I can't wait to see you get involved. I can't wait to see you grow in the Lord and be willing to join with us on the mission. I'm excited for what God's going to do. It's been a crazy couple of years. And boy, if you say, man, things are different than they used to, you're telling me. After 21 years here, my life is different, my family is different, and boy, is the church different. And there are some things about those changes I don't like. I really preferred when things were a little darker in the hair department. But times have changed. I've changed. But God is moving us forward. I want to embrace that. I want to be excited, not looking back and wishing things were the old way. I want to be excited about, Lord, where are you taking me? It may be hard. It may not be what I always thought it would be. But I'm going to trust you, Lord, to take me, to take us as a church where you want us to go to fulfill your mission, 
to reach your people with your shed blood for your salvation so that we might be with you together in heaven. I look forward to working with you this year. This has been my annual.